Hello there everybody, this is Peter of England bringing you a hopefully much awaited update on the recent developments um, concerning Weir Bank and re-movement. Um, as many of you will know, the uh, relaunch of Weir Bank took place uh, around about the beginning of April 2015 and so far there's been an absolute unprecedented, uh, shall we say, uptake of the facilities and services that we are offering. Um, after this video, I'm going to do a frequently asked questions um, update because many people are asking certain questions that can't be addressed uh, on the website or we haven't had time to place on the website. That's www.wearebank.co.uk and go to FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. Um, what I'd like to address on this short video at the moment is why uh, Wearebank has been relaunched at this time and why it's imperative that you come on board and join with RE, or re-movement, which is the, should we say, the political arm of the, the, the banking um, element which Weir Bank is trying to facilitate. Now what I've always maintained is that in order for there to be real change on this planet, for us to really take control of our country, take back our financial institutions, to take back the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive, which have all been infiltrated, and therefore these so-called three separational chambers within the constitution have all collapsed in on themselves. And for us to take this back, then there has to be some type of real meaningful action. That real meaningful action, unfortunately, for the status quo, i.e. those in power, has to come from us. Because otherwise, through the ballot box, which is a complete sham, uh, an elective dictatorship passing off as a democracy, as shown historically, historically, will never ever ever produce any results for the, the working man or the, the, the citizen, in inverted commas. So, this is the thing that we are addressing. Now, many of you uh, may be unaware why we have taken this, this, this um, relaunch campaign now. Um, there is always that which is unseen, and there's always that which is seen. Uh, what people see at the moment is a relaunch of some initiative that was initially formulated in 2012 when Weir Bank was first set up. However, why Weir Bank has been relaunched at the beginning of April is for a very, very specific window of opportunity that only presents itself possibly every five years in the United Kingdom. And that was at a time when a general election had been called and there was, in effect, no government in control of the United Kingdom's um, legislative procedure. That actual uh, process, when Parliament is dissolved, is called prorogation. If you go onto the website, you'll actually see a button that describes the procedure. So, for all intents and purposes now, Westminster is empty. There are no MPs sitting, they're all in their constituencies and are all actively involved in the hustings procedure to try and get re-elected. So any questions that are addressed to ministerial offices, any questions concerning the, the, um, the judiciary or the executive or the legislature, um, or parliamentary bills generally, have to be met with a resounding, we can't give an answer because at the moment there is no government, and there won't be a government until the Speaker of the House of Commons is elected and put on place after the results of the election. So, for all intents and purposes now, um, we are in a window of opportunity, and that's why we've relaunched at this time. Another very important point that we need to mention is we are Bank and Re-Movement are integral and part of the same um, movement for change. Most of you are being deluged, inundated, covered, buried under a sea of statutory instruments. These aren't acts of parliament, by the way. So when people say, the policeman at the side of the road, when the people at the council tell you, oh, but this is the law, it's a statute. Well, in many cases, these parts of what's called the, the statute law, the legislative process that have been thrust upon you, aren't in fact acts of parliament per se. They are what's called statutory instruments, and these statutory instruments have been issued over many, 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 sorry, in their thousands and thousands over time, over the last 10, 20, 30 years. 
And so what we find ourselves in now is a barrage of statutory instruments that are made in ministerial departments and in turn in committees which are then laid before the House in a book which lies on a desk and if they aren't objected to within 40 days they come into law. Now, so there's primary legislation and there is secondary legislation. The vast uh, majority of regulations and uh, rules from bylaws through county councils through, um, through road traffic legislation uh, through the changing of the sheriff's office and the, the high court enforcement officers. That's not what's called consensual government. They don't have the consent of the people. They have a five-year term where a supposed elected democratic government is put into place and it becomes what's called an elected dictatorship imposing laws upon you, left, right and centre, to which you have not consented. And if the people have not consented, the law is not a law. Another important thing, just to conclude this area of the constitutional aspect of why we're doing what we're doing and why you have to join with us, you have a legal, moral, uh, social and societal obligation to join with us to change a government. Because it's, the government should be in fear of you, not you in fear of the government. And so as we can see, there is something, something terribly wrong with this state of affairs in this country, isn't there? Lies, deceit, corruption, and where once you had the right or the opportunity to think and see as you saw fit, now you have systems of surveillance uh, and coercive elements within the government telling you how to think and feel and, and act. So for this aspect, you have a moral and legal and societal obligation to act. You must join with us. To finalise now, the society has become monetized. Monetization means everything has a value. This is why you have the traffic cameras. This is why you have the police pulling you over and checking whether you have a different coloured diesel in your tank. This is why the police stop cyclists going down one-way streets and giving, giving them tickets. It's all to do with money. And the monetization is the way that the, the democratic process of the two, what's called twin chambers, which are supposed to be the constitutional protection for the citizens of the United Kingdom, were undermined and eradicated with two acts of parliament, which are referred to as one act. And that is called the 1911-1949 Parliamentary Act. And what those two acts did, one just a few years before the First World War, conveniently, and one just after the Second World War concluded, was to take away all authority of the House of Lords as a chamber which could guard your democratic and constitutional rights to prevent you being taxed and having the money stripped from your pocket by the House of Lords being able to reject a bill concerning taxation or monetized instruments. And since 1911 and 1949, in effect, any bill that goes to the House of Parliament, goes through the Commons, the House of Lords has no authority to interrupt a money bill um, for more than I think, I think it's about a 30 to 40 day period. They can interrupt it, but they can't prevent it being passed. And so this is what's taken control of the country. Everything is now money. Everything is mammon. Um, and as we remember, there was only one occasion representative in the Bible where Jesus actually lost his temper and actually took a physical action that could be termed reasonably aggressive. And that's when he went into the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers. Now, this is a, 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 therefore a, a journey or a movement of biblical import and biblical implication. Join with us. I'm going to sign off now. We have a frequently uh, asked questions update coming along in the next video. So don't forget to join. Visit We Are Bank. Uh, type it into Google. Join with us. And don't forget to subscribe to Peter of England on YouTube. Thank you.